Hi, today I'm going to show you how to use attribute areas to create a volume element system easily in Sophistic. My name is George Schmidt and you can find me at Sophistic, who is a leading supplier of software for analysis, design and detailing in the field of structural engineering and for whom I'm working as a consultant engineer. Okay, let's get quickly start, uh, quickly start uh, today's episode. So basically what you can see on my screen is uh, a special uh, model made of volume elements purely. Uh, in, uh, in turquoise color you can see the superstructure of a bridge, at least a part of it. And we try to mount something onto this uh, superstructure, let's say this uh, light blue steel plate, with the help of N cores. And in between the steel plate and the superstructure you can see a, a, a mortar material with yellow color. If I go to the 3D view, maybe you can understand the model, model a little bit better. So here is the superstructure, here is the mortar material, this is a steel plate and I would like to anchor it into the superstructure. If I go to the view and click on the transparent view, maybe you can even see it better that uh, the anchors are within the uh, superstructure block. The definition of this original model uh, was done via purely text input in module Sophimesh A. And as you can see, uh, the input was quite tedious. Uh, first, you need to define the nodes and then you need to copy them. And then you need to set up some loops to create the volume elements, or the so-called brick elements. Okay, so it is one way to define this. And someone asked me whether or not it is possible to uh, define such a structure or such a system in Sophie Plus. Well, Sophie Plus, uh, in Sophie Plus, it is not possible to define volume elements directly, but uh, we can help uh, with the help of attribute area, we can create a very good basis uh, for our model. And this is what I'm going to show you today. I have created a new uh, SSD uh, project. In this new project, I have set up four materials. One material for the superstructure, C5060, one material for the mortar uh, material, it is C3037, one material for the steel plate, and one for the anchors. And I have created one uh, cross section. Uh, basically, it's a circular uh, section with a diameter of 25 millimeter and made of uh, a pre-stressing steel. Okay, then uh, let me show the model in Sophie Plus. So basically, in Sophie Plus, what you need to do is uh, create uh, uh, the basic uh, structural area. Here, I like I wanted to spice up. Uh, the model a little bit, so I played a little bit with the shape of the superstructure and the steel plate and the mortar. So the superstructure I defined uh, with an ellipse and uh, I assigned a structural area or I, I assigned this ellipse uh, as a structural uh, area. If I double click on it, you can see this, that basically this is a structural area in group number one with a thickness of zero millimeter made out of material uh, number one, C5060 concrete. The thickness is set to zero because basically we don't need the thickness at all. We are going to extrude the structural area into volume elements. Okay, and then in the structural elements tab, you can find this attribute area uh, tool or feature. And basically when you click on it, you can select uh, whichever uh, closed shape you want to assign as an attribute area. So I selected the steel plate outline and the only change I did is actually I uh, renamed as the steel plate. I assigned this attribute area to group number two and I changed the material of this attribute area. And then I also did the same for the mortar material. I assigned the outline to attribute area called mortar with a uh, group assignment to number three and with a material of uh, C37. Okay. And what I also did, and this was the last thing that I did in Sophie Plus, I have created four structural points. Structural point number one, number two, 
number three, number four. You can see this with uh, the red color. Okay, let's get quickly export the model to the database and see how it looks like in SSD. Okay, this is the model, how it looks like. So basically the attribute area did nothing more than change the group numbers and the materials of the selected area. And this is what we are going to do to create our model. So now we need to extrude this into volume elements. And this is what I did here in this task. I have inserted a new text editor task. And then let's get let's go through my input. So everything needs to be done in module Sophimesh A. First and foremost, you need to uh, restart the system. And then you also need to keep the current uh, definition. You can do this with the control rest 2 option. Then I have set up a new group with the number of 11. And in this new group, I'm going to create a brick element with a material uh, of number one. And the way I'm going to do is these brick elements is going to be an extrusion. So I'm going to extrude the quads that can be found in group number one along a path, which direction is given with a vector. And the vector coordinate is 0, 0, minus 500 meter. And I'm going to divide these volume elements or brick elements into 10 parts. I'm going to do the same for group number two. And I'm also going to do the same for the quads found in group number three. OK, so now the brick elements of the superstructure are created. Then I need to do a, a support condition for these quad elements. And in order to do that, I'm going to copy again uh, the uh, quad elements. Uh, by the way, in uh, the text input, you can create very nicely these chapters, which helps you later on uh, to inform yourself or others uh, what's going on in this definition. So in this uh, definition, I'm copying the quad elements to have a supporting surface for the brick elements. I have set up a new group, number 12, and I'm going to create quad elements with the properties of uh, bedding. And I'm going to assign a bedding perpendicular to the surface with a constant of one on the power of seven kilonewton per cubic meter. And also bedding uh, transversal uh, to, the, uh, to the bedded uh, springs with a stiffness of one on the power of seven kilonewton per cubic meter. Uh, made of uh, material number one. Then I'm going to copy uh, the quads found in group number one to three uh, with a vector which coordinate can be seen here. So basically minus 500 millimeter in the negative global Z direction. Okay, so now I have the main brick elements. Now I have the support of the brick elements. So we can go further on and create the mortar uh, brick elements or the brick elements of the mortar material. Again, I created a new uh, group, group number 13. I'm going to set up or define brick elements, again, uh, made of material number two, which is the mortar material. And I'm going to extrude again the groups found in group number three along a pass with the following uh, vector and I divided it I divided it into four parts. Okay, so now I have the superstructure and I have the mortar. Now it's time to create uh, the steel plate base on the top of the mortar material and this is what I'm going to do here in group number 14. I set up uh, again new quad elements made out of material number three, which is the steel plate material. And I'm going to copy the quad elements found in two and three, 100 millimeter in the positive global Z direction. And finally, this copy needs to be extruded. This is what I'm doing in group number 15. I'm creating new brick elements. Uh, made out of material number three. 
and I'm going to extrude these newly created quad elements that can be found in group 14 along a pass and uh, the pass is 0, 0, 0015 and I have divided these brick elements into two parts. Last but not least, you must do uh, the anchors into the superstructure and into the steel plate. So I have set up a new group and I'm going to define truss elements with the property of cross section number one, which can be seen here. And I'm going to extrude the nodes to create them to, to turn them and turn them to truss elements. This is the option node T. So I'm going to extrude nodes and then they are going to turn into truss elements. And the extrusion refers to node from node number one to four al along a pass, which vector is first 150 meter in the positive that, uh, z direction. And I'm also going to extrude them in the negative z direction. 400 millimeter and I applied a division to it. Okay, first let's see how the model looks like. So I'm going to only run this Sophie Mesh A module. Okay, and if I go to the system visualization, you can see the model very nicely created. So I have the superstructure with this elliptical shape. And then uh, I also have the anchors within the structure. If I go to uh, view, uh, sorry, uh, if I go to view and turn on the transparency, you can see that these truss elements really in the volume elements. Okay. And then basically, uh, I have just created one. Uh, uh, one load, in load case 11, where I'm going to uh, pre-stress the truss element that can be found in group 16 with 100 kilonewton. And uh, in the final stage, or as a final step, I'm just going to simply create a construction stage uh, analysis where I uh, first turn on every group and uh, also pre-stress them and then I perform some creep steps to see how the force changing uh, along the time in the anchors. So I'm going to run the SOFI load and the CSM input to see this effect. Now the CSM analyzing the stages as you can see here below. Okay, and now we can see the, the steps here. So basically if I freeze the image and I'm going to set an amplitude, a constant 100, for example, for all the, stage, for all the stages, uh, and maybe I turn off the transparency then you can see what's happening. So first I apply a pre-stress and then a lot of creep steps coming. So uh, because of the creep uh, and shrink effects, the deformation of the structure is changing. And for example, it's very interesting if I go to the bin graph and see the pre-stressing force in the tendon. If I go to the results, truss elements, and normal force. And first I'm going to see uh, the pre-stress force in the tendon uh, in the very first pre-stress stage. And then because of the creep and shrinkage, these 100 kilonewton original value is going to change along the time. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching the video. Thank you for now. Bye.